will now look at the formulas associated with permutation and combination and the cases in which we can use them. In our previous video, we looked at the fundamental counting principle. So let's quickly recall what that was. We said that let's say if there are 10 people in a race and uh, we want to find out the number of ways in which they can occupy the first, second and third spots. Let's say, then in how many ways can they do that? So for the first spot, we said for this spot, we have 10 possibilities. For the second spot, we have then nine possibilities because one person has already been placed over here. And uh, for the, now one person has been placed over here as well. And then for the third spot, we have eight possibilities. So we said since we have to choose the first, second and third uh, places. So that is why the total number of ways is 10 into 9 into 8. Right. We did the same thing, for example, in our burgers and beverages example as well. Right. So uh, this is called a fundamental counting principle. Mm -hmm. Now, note that this permutations formula, NPR, normally we write this as NPR. Now, this is equal to n factorial upon n minus r factorial where n is the number of people and r is the number of people who are selected for a certain arrangement. So over here in this example of ours where 10 people run the race and three of them occupy the three spots of first, second and third, this would be 10 p3. That is, there are 10 total people and we select three of them and arrange them. So this, according to this formula, we'll calculate this as 10 factorial upon 10 minus 3 factorial, which is equal to 10 factorial upon 7 factorial. Now we know that 10 factorial is equal to 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 factorial upon 7 factorial. So these two get cancelled. And what are we left with? We are left with 10 into 9 into 8. So this is the same as a fundamental counting principle. So essentially, this permutations formula, it is exactly the same as a fundamental counting principle. It helps us to select a certain number of people from a group and then arrange them in a particular order. So 10, so first, second, and third, there are, look, these are distinct positions, right? So there is a first position, the second, and the third position. So for example, if I were to choose A, C, and D, three people, now if I place them as A, C, and D, this is different from A, D, and C. These are two different results, right? Here, A is first in both the cases, but C is second here and D is third here. Whereas here D is second and C is third. So these are two different results, two different outcomes. And that is why we say that we need to arrange them as well. And for these, we use the fundamental counting principle, which is exactly the same as this formula as well. But since fundamental counting principle is a lot more intuitive and natural for us to think, um, we will avoid using this formula. Now, uh, but this formula, the NCR formula, is rather important and it helps us get clarity of thought. So we are going to use NCR extensively. Yeah, what is this equal to n factorial upon n minus r factorial into r factorial? Now, what is the meaning of NCR? What do we mean this combinations formula is this? It means that if out of 10 people, I want to select three people, let's say if I have 10 friends and I want to go out with three of them, so I have to select three of them in how many ways can I do that? I can do that in 10 C3 ways. This is only a selection. This is not an arrangement. I do not have to arrange them in first, second, and third positions. I, I don't have to say that this is my best friend and this is second best and this is third. No, no such thing, right? All I want is a group of three friends out of the 10 friends. When I have to only make a selection, then I use this formula. It is 10 C3. Essentially, it is the same NPR formula divided by R factorial. If you notice this thing, is nothing but that NPR formula or that fundamental counting principle that we talked about upon R factorial. 
Now, why uh, is there an R factorial here? Because we don't have to arrange the R people. Look over here by 10 into 9 into 8, we are arranging them in this position in first, second and third spots. And that is why uh, our answer was 10 into 9 into 8. But in this situation where we are selecting three friends, just selecting, we're not arranging them in any position. There is no first, second, and third. It's just a group of three people together. So that is why we divide 10 into 9 into 8 by R factorial. Our NPR was 10 into 9 into 8. And we divide it by 3 because there are three friends by 3 factorial to give us the number of just plain selections, no arrangement. We divide by 3 um, factorial to so-called unarrange. If we are using the FCP for uh, combinations as well, for only selections as well, then we have to unarrange them by dividing by 3 factorial. But then again, Look, it's, you know, it's easy to get confused in permutations and combinations. So what we are going to do is we are going to keep exactly one method for each different type of question so that we don't get confused in them. So when we have to select and arrange, we'll use the FCP, the fundamental counting principle. This will be select and arrange. But in case I have to only select, then I'll use the NCR formula. This is N factorial upon N minus R factorial into R factorial. Now, look, the formula looks a little complicated, but frankly, once you start using it, it is extremely simple. Okay, so then let's do this 10C3. What is then 10C3 is equal to 10 factorial as per the formula above. It is N factorial upon n minus r factorial into r factorial n minus r so this is our n and this is our r so n minus r factorial is 7 factorial and r factorial is 3 factorial so essentially it becomes 10 into 9 into 8 upon 3 factorial now, we use a shortcut to write this formula every time. What is the shortcut? Whenever we have to write, let's say, 9C2, we'll write start 9 into 8. And how many terms will we write here? We'll write two terms because R is 2. And we'll divide by 2 factorial. Once you uh, get used to this shortcut, you know, getting the values for all these NCRs are, is going to be a very, very quick process. You don't have to think about this entire formula at all. Why are we doing that? Because, look, because we have N factorial, when we have 10 factorial, for example, this is 10 into 9 into 8 into N minus R factorial. This is a 7 factorial, right? That is nothing but... 7 factorial here, which is n minus r factorial. And this is also n minus r factorial. So we are able to write only r terms of n factorial. And then we multiply by r factorial at, in the denominator. So of course, these get cancelled out. We don't have to worry about these. So then what do we simply do to write ncr? We write... We start writing an n factorial and we write r terms in the numerator and in the denominator, we simply write r factorial. That is how we uh, write ncr. Yeah? Uh, we'll just take a look at some examples and this will become a whole lot clearer. Don't worry. Once you start using NCR, then uh, you won't even need to write down uh, to get the value. Quite often, you will be able to just quickly, uh, you know, orally calculate it in your mind. Uh, we'll, we'll just talk about that. Now, NCR is also equal to NC N minus R. Uh, again, that makes sense because NCR is N factorial upon N minus R factorial into R factorial. And what is NC N minus R? That is again N factorial uh, N minus. Now, N minus R, this whole thing factorial and into N minus R factorial. Of course, now this here, N and N get cancelled. So what we are left with is 
over here n factorial upon r factorial into n minus r factorial. So, of course, this thing is exactly the same as this thing. And how does that come in handy? Well, so then, for example, if I'm given 10C8, look, this is going to be a little complicated for us to solve, right? We'll have to start writing 10 factorial and we'll have to write eight terms over here, on and on and on over 8 factorial, right? But then uh, if we know that 10C8 is nothing but 10C2 and mathematically 10C8 is equal to 10C2, then all we have to do is calculate 10C2 instead. And that is extremely simple. That is just 45. We can just see it. We can just think about it. 10C2 means 10 into 9, two terms divided by what 2 so 10 into 9 is 90 divided by 2 is 45 so then our answer quickly comes as 45 so that is why this we we use this quite extensively normally when r is let, let's say greater than n by 2 then we use it because it makes our uh, calculation simpler yeah so for example in case i have 8c5, I'll instead write it as 8c3 and then solve. Easier, a shorter calculation, even though mathematically both are the same. Let's take one example now. The director's team consists of eight people. He needs to select three of them to take with him for a film viewing. In how many ways can he select three of the eight people? So first notice that this is just a selection. He wants to select a group. There is no arrangement of the three people. So he only has to select, which means we'll use 8C3. How will we calculate 8C3? We'll say 8 into 7 into 6. Three terms are done upon 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 into 2. Of course, this gets cancelled and we are left with 56. Simple. Since we had to just do selection, only select, we use combinations. Normally, selecting and then arranging is actually a far easier and more natural way to think about it. So whether we use the combinations formula or the fundamental counting principle, it will just depend on our situation. NCR is a useful little nugget. It gives you clarity of thought. So do practice using it.